and then give you interstate transport because now you have possess and carry. And of course I was going to Pennsylvania where there's reciprocity where I can possess and carry. <laughs> you know, exactly. So that's why there's many advantages uh, to it, you particularly New Hampshire a, license. You have to be a New Hampshire resident? Well, there is a New Inhabitant. Hampshire non-resident license. Yeah. And that one is through the central, uh, you know, but if you're a non-resident, you can get that for $20 and it's kind of a card like this and that'll, uh, you know, cover you. And you do have to have that license on your person as opposed to a resident license that you do not have to carry with you, even if you're granted. Now, I suggest making a photocopy and carrying it, but you don't have to. Yes? Uh, in the light of what you just said, how come uh, Bill Walker had the problem when he... Well, that's a continuing case, so I can't talk about it. Of unloaded weapon in the car. We're still, that's still, we're still we in the cam fight. We got cameras. So yeah, yeah, still in the fight. Yeah, so. Could you briefly touch on the New Hampshire private sale laws? And what, yes, what sure. What personally known might be? Sure, okay. In order to sell long arm in New Hampshire, um, sell it. That's it. The only Good exception price. being don't sell it to a felon. Okay, but as far as the sale goes, as long as it's not to a felon, you're fine on selling rifle, shotgun, long arm. How do you know if you sold to a felon? Well, that's it. Don't sell to a felon. Well, did you know you were selling to a felon? Oh, okay. Well, there you go. I mean, that, and let me just tell you, I'm not, I'm not joking. I mean, seriously, I've had cases where they try to do a gun show sweep in Pennsylvania, and on precisely that question, you know, they're trying to set them up. The other guy's like, well, he's, he's a felon. I want to buy it for him. You know, saying it. So absolutely, if a guy says to you, hey, look, you know, I happen to have a record, but man, I, you know, this way you just buy and done, goodbye, yep. you know, as soon as he says it, that's boom. But, you know, now as far as handgun goes though, then it, you either have to be personally known or licensed under the chapter. So if the person has a carry license, you can sell them a handgun, or if they're personally known to you, sell the handgun or transfer it, it's, that's it. So there's no problem with that on private sale in that regard in New Hampshire. The only thing, if you were a dealer in handguns, in addition to the federal firearms license, if you were a dealer, different towns can mandate a handgun retail license. Some do, some don't. But that's it even for dealer licensing. Yes? Is there any case law that defines what personally known means? Oh, no, no, no. No, there's nothing that I'm aware of about that. So if they're personally known, I mean, now, you know, that's their person. That's the deal. So you don't want to have that. Yes. Is there a number limit on the number of long? I mean, how many could you sell as a private seller before well, you become a dealer de facto? You know, they, they, they look at it as to, there's not like it's a per se number, because there are folks who sell a gun collection of hundreds of guns, but they're not a dealer. They're just selling their collection. It looks to your operations for business or profit as a livelihood. Okay, and that's what the feds look to. Now, New Hampshire, there's no, no nothing. They don't care. I mean, unless you're in a town that mandates dealers of handguns have a license, then if you're just blowing out a lot of handguns, they may accuse you of being a license in the town. But other than that, there's no state law regarding it. There was a New Hampshire so, Supreme Court opinion, I think, on, on that topic. That I, I forget the, the name of it, but it made it very clear that um, if you could assert in any way that this was not, you know, the dealerships, not a regular business, uh, that you were exempt. Wouldn't surprise me, because there's no law prohibiting so, you know, other than, unless you're talking about the state license, the town license issue, if that's the case you're talking about. Yes, sir, in the back. Could you uh, elaborate on which states uh, reciprocate with the concealed? Sure, let me tell you about that. Uh, right now, if you go to New Hampshire's public safety, uh, Department of Safety website, they have the current list. But also in, in our book, right in the FAQ up front, which the way we set it up, Sam and I discuss this at length. We have a very detailed, frequently asked questions section. Then I give explanations, annotations and explanations of all the uh, statutes governing New Hampshire law. And in our FAQ, we do list what was current at the time. And it's probably pretty valid, but you want to confirm it before you go to the state. All the states that um, uh, is your concealed carry license from another state valid in New Hampshire, you want to know where your New Hampshire license is valid. There's a reciprocity. So here's the list at this point. But remember, these do change. Um, Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, for law enforcement only in Arkansas, 
Colorado, Florida, Georgia, Idaho, Indiana, Kentucky, Louisiana, Michigan, Mississippi, Missouri, North Carolina, North Dakota, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Utah, and Wyoming. So for 10 bucks, you get this state and all those other state coverage and 926A for interstate transport and the ability to buy handguns from people that aren't personally known by you. <laughs> yeah, yes, sir. Go ahead, in the red, in the black shirt. Um, is it covered for non-resident permits for the rest of the city as well? That's what I was that, That's going to be very dependent on the state's agreement. Mm -hmm. Now, in, for example, Pennsylvania, yes, for that, even a non. A matter of fact, just as a show you the power of this, in New Jersey, a New Jersey resident can get a Florida carry license, which is a shall issue. Florida's carry license actually doesn't distinguish between resident or non, even though your address is on it. It's just the same license. That license is honored in Pennsylvania for both resident and non-resident. So myself, as a New Jersey citizen, when I even couldn't get a New Jersey carry license, I wouldn't even try because it's, the system is, is, uh, is, is like the Soviet Constitution. You know, I wouldn't even try it. But here uh, in, in New Jersey, my Florida license that I didn't even have to go to Florida to get, let me carry in Pennsylvania, right next door to New Jersey, legally. So, you, but the thing to do is, you know, go online and verify the state before you go, make sure you bring your license with you when you go, and I always copy off the internet the attorney general opinions or whatever I have so that if I am stopped and all I have is that non-resident that, you know, even the officer can be informed <coughs> right away. And you need to know the laws of the state you're going to. Because in New Hampshire, there's no requirement that you tell the officer that you're armed. But in other states, there are. There's no requirement, you know, there's different places you're prohibited in those states where you wouldn't be in New Hampshire. So you have to be careful that when you're in those other states, even though you have that reciprocity, that you're still within that jurisdiction's gun laws. Yes? This is a little bit different, but if you would, if like a family called 911, a member of the family was on one, any of these databases, does that change the way that they, their situation is handled? Okay, yeah. I'm not aware of what I call flags in New Hampshire, although they may exist. But in New Jersey, every person that had a firearms ID card, the police agencies had a firearms flag, so they went to that house geared up for armed persons to be there. And I know for a fact that in Jersey, for simple long arm possession, not even carry, just long arm card, boom, they were there with that flag built into the 911 system. Yes. But I'm not aware of that in this state. Yes. I was trying to find the, the law in your book, which I bought uh, two days ago. Well, thank uh, you. About the uh, switch blades. Uh, yeah, they're right in there. I was trying to find that okay. it's prohibited to possess. Uh, I, I okay. remember you thought that... Uh, Let's talk real quick if anyone knows about yeah. switchblades. Um, let me show you something here. Not a switchblade. <laughs> and let me tell you why, which is true. Uh, this is called an assisted opener. Switchblades are defined by having a button or other device in the handle. Switchblades in modern times have evolved to the what is really a preferred assisted opener because the first time you're going to need that switchblade and push the button and it breaks, now you won't even be able to open it. Whereas even if the spring breaks here, you could even manually open it if you had to. And without a button and simply having the spring, it gives an assist. You can carry this legally in New Hampshire, no problem, just not in a courthouse. There's no license required, there's no, there's no blade lengths wow. regulated. You carry a bowie knife and a shoulder holster if you want. Sure, there's no law on that, not a problem. Uh, as long as you're not a felon, okay? And uh, switchblades, though, there's certain per se that create a quirky matrix. And here's what it is. Switchblade, dagger, dirk, stiletto, or metal slung knuckles, shot. okay? Slung shot. And slung shots. Boy, I love slung shots. That's